I think it's fair to say that when it comes to auto guiding, like, this is probably the time at which most people really start to struggle. So tonight I'm really excited because I hit a new milestone in my astrophotography journey and I'm going to be able to try auto guiding for the first time ever. So for those that haven't already seen a setup, I've got the Skywatcher Evo Guide 50 ED and the ZWO ASI 120mm Mini. Those that watch my unboxing video, you'll know that I've had the auto guiding equipment for a couple of months now, but I've had to wait for a couple of adapters that were out of stock for a while. But they've finally arrived and I'm blessed with a clear night tonight, so I'm going to try and photograph the Rosette Nebula which is a target that I didn't manage to get very much time on last year. It's one of my favourite objects to look at on uh, social media when other people have photographed it, so I can't wait to see what I'm able to produce with my setup here. So as I've said, I've had to buy a couple of adapters to be able to get my auto guiding equipment onto the 72EZ um, for one reason mainly, and I think it's probably the most common complaint about the 72ED, and that is this. The dovetail that comes with the 72ED is way too short and even without the auto guiding equipment um, I've never been able to get a perfect balance but I've put up with it for now because the balance was so close to being um, perfect that I didn't think it really mattered and I've been able to capture two minute subs absolutely no problem for a couple of years now. I should stress that I've got one of the older models and I know that the new model is slightly shorter so perhaps balance isn't so much of a problem but I think they still use the, uh, the same dovetail and it's just way too short quite frankly. Frankly. Um, so what I have had to do is I've had to buy two Astro Essential 18 centimeter dovetail bars and an ADM Vixen clamp which is split into two sections so there's a clamp for the bottom to attach to the dovetail and then a clamp to the top to attach for the uh, dovetail for the for the guide scope. But now that I've got my longer dovetails and I've got the right adapter um, I've been able to balance this rig no problem. I think it's fair to say that when it comes to auto guiding, this is probably the time at which most people really start to struggle with astrophotography. I've, I see this all the time on forums and social media. And auto guiding seems to be the thing that everybody struggles with. I think it boils down to three things really, and that is you need a very accurate polar alignment or as accurate as you can get it. Some people use extra bits of kit to be able to get an accurate polar alignment like the Pole Master, for example. It obviously goes without saying that the better that your polar alignment is, the easier time that your guiding equipment is going to have because the adjustments that it's going to send back to the mount won't be as much as an inaccurate polar alignment. So your guiding will be instantly better with a better polar alignment. Balance, I think, is not talked about enough in astrophotography, certainly in the, in the beginner's world. Balance is equally as important as an accurate polar alignment. And if your rig isn't balanced, then guiding is going to have a bit of a tough time because it's going to have to work extra hard and the mount's going to have to work extra hard to be able to make those adjustments and it might be that the adjustments are just too great for auto guiding to be able to cope with and therefore your guiding won't work. I read a lot online that actually auto guiding can be better if your mount is slightly biased to the east side in terms of its balance but I've just balanced mine perfectly and I'll see how I get on tonight and hopefully that won't be a problem for me. The longer your focal length the harder you will find auto guiding to be if you've never done it before and that goes back to my polar alignment thing a minute ago because it's much harder to get a more precise polar alignment with a longer focal length and therefore your mount is going to be working extra hard again so my setup for this is ideal because I've got a really wide field refractor it's really forgiving and um, even if my polar alignment isn't that accurate, I can still get away with two minute exposures um, with only just slight egg shaped stars right at the edge of the field of view. So that's fantastic. So let me show you the setup. You're gonna have to forgive my absolutely terrible cable management at the moment, but because this is my first time, I've not tidied up any of the cables because I want to see how much give I need to be able to give everything when the telescope moves in uh, declination. So. What I've got here is, this is my Skywatcher Evo Guide 50ED and the ZWO ASI 120mm and I've got the ST4 cable coming out the back of the uh, camera and into the auto guiding port of the mount and normally you'll probably see a lot of people using their USB cable to go into their laptop 
or mini PC, but I've got this going into a Raspberry Pi. Those that have been watching the channel for a while will know that I've been using Astro Berry for my um, image acquisition software. Right, I'm not gonna take you through the whole setup process tonight. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for it to get dark. I'm gonna do my polar alignment, star alignment, as I normally would. I'm gonna slew to the Rosette Nebula, and then we're gonna pick up this video as I've jumped on Astro Berry on my laptop before I've started to do any imaging so that I can show you how to set everything up in PHD2. Okay, so we're now on the laptop. I'm uh, polar aligned, star aligned. I have slewed to the Rosette Nebula and connected everything to the Raspberry Pi. In Astro Berry, you can see that I'm connected to the guide camera and my DSLR. So I'll go over to the um, guide tab here. This is within ECOS in KSTARS. And so um, I'm going to actually be using PHD2, but you'll see that the two um, talk to each other. And I'm going to do a full tutorial of how to auto guide using Astro Berry. So forgive me for skipping over. Um, a few of those steps tonight but once I've got the process nailed down and I know exactly what I'm doing and in what order then I'll do a full tutorial but otherwise if I tried doing it now it would just be all over the place okay so when you first load up PHD2 um, you'll need to set up a profile based on the equipment that you have um, I did this earlier today just so that when I was starting my imaging I could just get going so you can see that I have selected the ZWO ASI camera as my camera and that I am connected to that because of the way that I'm doing my auto guiding I've got the ST4 cable going from the camera into the mount and so for the mount selection you want to select on camera um, and don't worry about that there so we'll hit close there and basically PHD2 is really quite user friendly actually especially for astrophotography software because all we're doing is going through these buttons from left to right essentially so the next button is to begin looping so what that's going to do is it's going to loop the frames based on whatever um, exposure duration we set this to I'm going to set that to two seconds or not maybe I have to use the drop down there we go and then begin looping when once that's looping you'll see um, hopefully uh, a couple of stars on the frame um, and that, that's that's at the point in which you want to try and achieve focus so I already tested this out earlier by I slewed to the moon obviously a nice bright object in the sky to be able to focus on so I've done that and it looks like it's done a pretty good job there I think because those stars are quite small on the frame um, and that that loop will just refresh every two seconds. Um, so that's a little tip for you there. Use the moon. It's much easier to focus on that than it is on a star and looking at this screen while it's looping. And then we can get PHD2 to auto select a star for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so it's selected that star and the SNR's just over 40. I think that's pretty good, but honestly, um, some people get a real obsession with all of the numbers and how the graph looks and things like that. Honestly, while I'm not experienced with auto guiding yet, um, oh, Hugo's come to say hello. Hello, Hugo. What are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Good boy. While I'm not an experienced auto guider at the minute, I think uh, the numbers concern me less. As long as it says that guiding is good, that's basically all I care about. So I'm going to go ahead and shift click that just to force the calibration because I was playing around with this earlier and I just want to make sure that it does um, calibrate. So hold down shift on the keyboard and click that. <laughs> Hello. Um, so that's going to go through its calibration process. That takes uh, a couple of minutes, I think, and hopefully at the end of that, everything turns out okay. So as you can see, the calibration appears to have been successful. Um, it says that we're guiding. Uh, the graph's just starting to come into play now, so we'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed. At the minute, I'm obviously very pleased because it appears as though it's working. I'm not going to worry too much about the graph at this point in time. I'm more concerned about the quality of the images that I get rather than how the graph looks, to be honest. If you're using Astroberry or Stellamate and um, Ecos, like I am, um, then if you want to enable dithering, which is where between frames, the image acquisition software will send little signals to the mount and move the telescope ever so slightly because as you're pointing at the same part of the sky all the time and tracking through the sky, um, especially with a DSLR, you're going to get fixed pattern noise. 
and um, a great way to be able to get rid of that is to just make very small adjustments between frames and that will eliminate that noise and you'll end up with a better quality image and to be perfectly honest I'm more excited about being able to dither than I am about being able to guide but the two come hand in hand so I'm really pleased to be able to do that. So to be able to do that in Ecos you want to be on the guide tab just here and go down to the options button and then uh, you want to click on guide and click on that tick box there for dither and there are some settings here within this i did some googling earlier and i think three pixels seems to be right for my setup right so now i'm going to do a three minute test exposure so back to the camera tab so you can see there it's on my 650d 180 second exposure i'm just going to do one for now and i'm going to change that to fit so that i can do an auto stretch when it loads in um, it's a light frame ISO 1600 okay I'm just going to click on the capture a preview button there to take a three minute test shot and we'll see how that looks all right so I've, I've just been to check the back of the camera screen outside because the image that got transferred to here look, didn't look right at all but it seems absolutely fine there was just a bit of a strange pattern on it for some reason if you look <laughs> you look at my guiding you can see where I was playing around with the uh, with the camera outside so um guiding still seems to be going okay apart from uh, me buggering it up okay so now that that's all going i'm gonna keep an eye on it for the first um couple of exposures make sure that the guiding stays okay make sure that the dithering's not doing something uh weird to my images and i'll see how it goes hopefully this is a successful night i hope for those of you that are struggling with guiding that this helped a little bit I can't wait to share my first ever auto guiding image with you at the end of this video. Please remember to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and it helped you out. Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so that you're notified every time I do an upload. My name is Nick and you've been watching Astro Exploring and I'll see you guys next time.